Hey guys, this is Kathy Iconis with QBO Chat, and I am here to show you how to use Zapier to record a Stripe sales receipt and the credit card processing fee all at the same time. It's going to be awesome. This is epic, guys. I know this is a big, big issue for a lot of people out there that Stripe brings in the net amount through the bank feed, but we can actually set it up so that we can automate the whole process and it's fantastic. I'm so excited to show you. So this is Zapier. Let's start making this zap. The first thing we want to do is pull in Stripe. So we're going to do Stripe and we're going to say every time there's a new charge, let's do something. And we're going to, my Stripe account's already connected, save and continue. Um, do I want to include failed charges on this? No, not really, because I'm going to actually create a sales receipt and um, the expense every single time a charge comes in, so I don't want the ones that are failed. Uh, so we'll continue. Okay, we're checking things out. We get a sample charge right here. We'll go with that. So we don't have an action step. What are we gonna do? What action do we wanna create? We wanna create a sales receipt, but first we need to find the customer. So right here, you have an option to search, find the customer, because this could be a new customer. We need to match it up to the customer to be able to create a sales receipt, right? So we wanna save and continue. And I am going to search the email field and I'm going to find that value in Stripe. We have the receipt email right there. So I'm going to use that to um, look for and uh, set up the customers. So you have this little checkbox right here, create QuickBooks online customer if it doesn't exist yet. So yes, definitely. Full name. Well, I'm just going to use the source name that comes in from um, Stripe. We can't really split it out between first and last name in here. That's fine with me. Um, it is the display name. It works. I'm cool with that. Then Stripe also, you get the receipt email, have that in there. And we might be able to find other information. Let's see. Let's see. I am not seeing any um, uh, address information in here from all of the available options within uh, that's coming in off of that Stripe transaction. So we're fine. I mean, these are all virtual transactions, so I really honestly don't need the address, but I was just checking it out for us to see if we could even do it. Uh, let's see, we got all of this stuff in here, continue. So to finish, uh, I need to, uh, fetch and continue, see if it works. So we're testing this step out. It was successful. So now we want to do is actually add that sales receipt or quick, uh, create the sales receipt. So I'm going to go to QuickBooks online, create a sales receipt. Save and continue. It's so exciting. Okay. Um, so you can select a specific customer. Hey guys, if you don't want to put in the actual customer um, every time, you could just put up a Stripe customer and code it to that every single time. That's fine. I actually want to map it to the uh, people that submit charges. So I'm going to, that's why I set up that find or create customer. Um, source name right there and I'm not going to put in the email send later um, it really doesn't matter I don't want to give it the email because I don't want it to email out the sales receipt so um, you could put in the email and then say send later yes so that it's sitting in the queue but I really don't even want to deal with all that uh, so when we create the the sales receipt, we need to know what the line item is and everything. So line amount right here, we're going to go back to the Stripe transaction and it has amount. 
perfect line description. Go back to that and I actually have a description. So I'm going to put that in there and it's my online cleanup master course. Perfect. And I'm going to actually code it to my product service for master classes right here. We have one item. You can see here what is required and what's optional information that you can put in here. In my line class, I'm going to put in as QBO chat because I like to track my revenue or my actually profit and loss for QBO chat separately. So let's see, transaction date is optional on here. It's probably going to do it the same time it creates that zap. So I don't need to worry about it. Um, payment method, payment reference number. So where do I want to deposit the account into? So I actually use a clearing account. I use a Stripe clearing account. So all transactions that come in from the bank go into the Stripe clearing account. And then all of these transactions from Zapier go into the clearing account and they zero each other out uh, every single time a transaction is made. So we're actually creating two transactions, the sales receipt and then the expense afterwards. Uh, so it won't necessarily match up to the bank feed, but by using that clearing account, you're able to use it because um, the debits and credits equal each other and zero out. Let's see what other options we have down here. I'm not going to use class here because I already used it in the item area. It's not important to put in twice. And continue. And then we're going to test this one out. Woo, woo, it was successful. Okay, now we're gonna, oh, I didn't want to finish. Let's go back. <laughs> I got a little too ahead of myself. Okay, continue. Now, um, add a step. So go back up to QuickBooks online. And I'm gonna show less common options right here. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we have create expense. I'm going to do that. Save and continue. And payee type. So in this instance, is it a vendor or a customer or employee that we're going to put in on the expense? So I'm do a vendor. Uh, vendor, I'm, the name I'm going to put in, Stripe. Payment type, really doesn't matter. Bank credit card account. This is our Stripe clearing account. Payment date is optional, payment method optional, reference number, print later, all of that fun jazz. Now, account, where do I want it to go to? I want it to go to bank charges. And for some reason, every time I do this, it gives me problems to find the bank charges. Let's try charges. Okay, bank, <laughs> I swear, uh, let's see, do, do, do. hey, look, bank charges now, I told you it was in there, you guys were starting to doubt me, weren't you, okay, so I'm just going to say this is Stripe processing fees, and then I'm going to put in the amount coming from Stripe, and here, let me scroll down, there's that transaction fee right there. I bill status customer. I don't need to do any of that, but I do want to track the QBO chat um, class so that I can see the PL from QBO chat and see how we're doing. I could put in a memo if I wanted to, but it's not necessary. So continue. Look at this. There's the information. Send test to QBO. And it's done. How awesome is that? Finish. What am I going to say this? Awesome zap from Stripe to QBO. Yeah, baby. And I'm done. Let's see what it looks like over in QBO. 
So first, here's the sales receipt. So we got the name in, um, the date, was the date that it was set up. It goes into this clearing account. I have my masterclass, the description, amount, all of that stuff. So that is already in there. Now let's look at the expense. And here's the expense account. It's going to Stripe, or expense transaction, sorry. Here it's going to Stripe, Stripe clearing, payment date, and I have it going to my bank charges. I swear it was in there. Stripe processing fees, 891, that was the, the amount, right? Going to QBO chat. So we got both of them. Now let me show you what it looks like in the clearing account. Okay, so here is my clearing account. I'm going in, reconciling, going for a zero ending balance right there. Uh, so you can see two examples here. So I had the transaction, there's the expense, there is the deposit that came in from the bank and it zeroes each other out. Same thing, the one I just created. There, the expense and the deposit. So all of that together zeroes out and all I have to do at the end of each month or whenever you want, just create a $0 bank reconciliation so you know you're on track and everything is awesome. Love this automation. I hope you love it too. Please um, leave a comment if you love it as much as I do or if you have any questions or anything like that. And if you want to, you can always sign up for one of my master classes or master courses to see um, more of this kind of stuff and learn more about QBO and have a great time.